Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Last time we have discussed GI perforation with multiple examples. This is normal x ray of the chest. Gastric bubble is noted. Normal left hemidiaphragm, and this is normal right hemidiaphragm. Another normal pattern where we can see left hemidiaphragm, and this is right hemidiaphragm. And this air is noted in splenic flexure. Here we can see x ray of the abdomen where air is noted in small intestine and large intestine. Ascending colon can be seen, hepatic flexure, and normal caliber of the small intestine and large intestine is noted. Usually, small intestine should not be more than 2.5 or 3 cm in diameter and large intestine should not be 5 to 6 cm in the diameter. So these are normal air patterns in the abdomen. Here we have uh, bare meal examination where we can see contrast outlining stomach and duodenum and this is the area where we can see ulcer with radiating mucosal folds and this patient came with a history of acute pain and when we did his x-ray of the chest and upper abdomen we can see in air under both hemidiaphragm suggesting perforation and this is another patient where we have seen that there is ulcer in the proximal portion or first portion of the duodenum this is duodenal cap where we can see ulcer and there is deformed proximal end of this portion so this patient has also presented the same complaint that he came in the emergency with severe abdominal pain we have some magnified view this is a duodenal cap which is a bit deformed mucosal folds are thickened and we can see this is ulcerated area where we can see contrast flexion this area can be noted in main view where we can see stomach and duodenum and this is small area where we can clearly identify ulcer and this is a magnified view here we have uh, multiple examples of nemoperitoneum that is air under both hemidiaphragms another view we can see extra chest and upper abdomen tiny strip of free air under right hemidiaphragm but we have to know that this patient had previous surgery so after surgery we can see a tiny strip of free air in the abdominal cavity now we can see this is uh, a case of the blunt trauma 20 years old male patient presented in the emergency after blunt abdominal trauma so when we did his x-ray of the chest and upper abdomen we can see free air under the right hemidiaphragm this represents perforation massive amount of nemoperitoneum air under both hemidiaphragms and there are many other signs of the nemoperitoneum as well we can see this is liver and here we have free edge of the liver we can see air in under the free edge of the right lobe of the liver and this x-ray has been taken in spine position and we can see a rounded air under anterior abdominal wall suggesting football sign and here we can see air in the gut and outside of the gut so we can clearly assess inner and outer surfaces of the gut wall suggesting double wall sign or regular sign another example we can see air outside and within the lumen and uh, both aspects of the walls can be seen suggesting double wall sign or regular sign initially we have seen x-ray chest and upper abdomen and uh, we have diagnosed perforated viscera in the sh uh, considering pneumoperitoneum and here we have uh, another example we can see ct examination of the abdomen this is left lobe of the liver right lobe of the liver and tiny air pocket is appreciated just anterior to the anterior surface of the liver and mild free fluid is appreciated as well this is an example of perforated viscera with air and ascites another example we can see this is left and right lobe of the liver part of the spleen this is stomach 
gastric air bubble air fluid level in multiple tiny low density air pockets are noted with free fluid in the abdomen suggesting ascites and pneumoperitoneum another example we can see right lobe of the liver this is gallbladder pancreas in both kidneys aorta and uh, we can see the part of the portal vein and here we see massive amount of ascites this is free fluid in the peritoneal cavity and here this is free air under interior abdominal wall which we have seen in x-ray taken in a, sp in a spine position presenting a football sign another example where we can see free air under interior abdominal wall and this presents a football sign on spine x-ray of the abdomen and we can see air within the lumen and outside of the lumen and both sides of the walls can be seen suggesting double wall sign or regular sign in it another example of the ct of the abdomen we can see massive amount of free peritoneum peritoneal air under interior abdominal wall suggesting perforation and here we have another example we can see coronal reformatting of uh, ct contrast is noted in the stomach and duodenum left and right lobe of the liver heart left hemidiaphragm and the right hemidiaphragm and we can see air under right hemidiaphragm over right lobe of the liver suggesting pneumoperitoneum here we have another example where we can see massive free air in the peritoneal cavity suggesting pneumoperitoneum left hemidiaphragm and right hemidiaphragm are lifted multiple air pockets are also appreciated in and between gut loops now we are discussing intestinal obstruction where we can see there are three imaging modalities which can be used number one x-ray of the abdomen number two ct of the abdomen and number three conventional contrast studies like barium meal barium follow through but we will use conventional contrast studies in partial intestinal obstruction this test is contraindicated in complete obstruction here on the x-ray we can see this is a typical picture of small bowel obstruction we can see air in and dilated small bowel and we can see complete mucosal folds suggesting small intestine we have to see the diameter which should be between 2.5 to 3 centimeter if diameter is more than this it will be considered abnormal and we will label it as dilated small gut loop and its wall thickness should be up to three millimeter small gut is noted in central portion of the abdomen and large gut in peripheral portion and here we see that gut loops are occupying central portion of the abdomen number one suggesting small intestine and number two complete mucosal folds are noted which are not seen in the large gut so we have diagnosed that this dilated loop represents dilated small intestine here we have uh, x-ray of the abdomen in standing posture where we can see multiple air fluid levels suggesting obstruction and uh, there is a criteria that there should be three air fluid levels and when we measure the length of one level it should be around three centimeter so three centimeter three centimeter and three centimeter and levels should be three or more so in standing posture we will see multiple air fluid levels another example we see multiple air fluid levels suggesting obstruction here is a case 67 years old woman presented to the surgical emergency with a distended abdomen and vomiting what we have seen in the x-ray of the abdomen central gut loops are distended or dilated mucosal folds are complete so this suggests small intestine which is dilated most probably because of obstruction and what could be the causes of the obstruction surgical adhesions hernia any intraluminal mass like lymphoma or adenocarcinoma or some sort of gallstone so there are multiple reasons for the intestinal obstruction it can be either because of tuberculosis any mass can lead to the intestinal obstruction 
intersusceptions, peritoneal adhesions, and hernias. Here we have another example. We can see this is CT examination of the abdomen. Contrast has been given. Both kidneys show normal uptake of the contrast. This is contrast filled aorta, sputum is enteric artery, and vein. And here we see dilated small gut with complete mucosal fold and air fluid levels suggesting small intestinal obstruction this is another example where we can see the exact cause this is a stricture in the terminal ileum this stricture is because of tuberculosis and proximal portion of the small gut is dilated so in this case we can clearly identify etiology another example where we can see this is oral contrast within the small intestine and terminal portion of the small intestine shows stricture with thickened surrounding walls. Another example of ileal or ileocecal tuberculosis leading to intestinal obstruction. So in these two examples we have seen intestinal tuberculosis leading to obstruction and proximal holdup of the contrast. This is barium follow-through examination. We can see a tight stricture involving terminal ileum. And this is a cecum and proximal portions of the small intestine. So this stricture leads to holdup of contrast in proximal small intestine. And etiology is tuberculosis. Here we have another example where we have barium follow-through examination there is prominent holdup of the contrast in ingestionum and there is evidence of stricture number one number two and number three and number four so multiple strictures are noted with normal intervening areas that is skip lesion so this is because of crohn's disease another example of the Crohn's disease we can see there is a proximal holdup of the contrast and small bowel is dilated here we have one stricture and relatively normal area while there is another stricture in the distal portion so this is also because of Crohn's disease here we have barium follow-through examination where we can see small bubble loops are herniated through inguinal region into scrotal sac suggesting inguinoscrotal hernia leading to intestinal obstruction so hernia also can lead to intestinal obstruction this is seat examination of the pelvis where we can see contrast outline unibladder and large gut and here we can see contrast filled small bubble loops in the inguinal canal on left side same patient this is these are small bubble loops containing air in the contrast with mesentery in the scrotal sac so these three images shows hernia to inguinoscrotal region leading to intestinal obstruction this is another case where we see there is uh, hernia through interior abdominal wall. Usually these are surgical hernias. That is after some surgical procedure, interior abdominal wall become weak and gut loops can herniate through the weak portion of the abdomen. So another example where we can see hernia through scar site in interior abdominal wall. This is left kidney which is a transplanted kidney so in this case because of previous intervention there was a weak point in the interior abdominal wall and hernia and we can see herniated gut loop through this region another example here we can see there is herniated small bubble through a scar site in right lower interior abdominal wall and here we can see gut loops are dilated proximal to this this is a gallstone. Proximal to gallstone, we see small bowel is dilated. This happens because of perforated gallbladder. Gallstone causes obstruction of small intestine when it reach in the terminal ileum. So this is an example of the gallstone ileus. Here we have an example of 
tumor masses in the large intestine which leads to intestinal obstruction and this is a normal portion of the gut this is another normal portion of the gut wall and here we see a mass lesion surrounding the lumen and this is the central portion of the lumen we can see this is a schematic diagram where we can see the mass and this is the lumen it presents a typical apple core appearance so tumor masses in the large intestine we see this is a barium edema examination through which we study a large intestine this is another example where we can see a typical apple core appearance shouldering of the edges and irregular mucosa here is the mass surrounding the central portion of the lumen shouldering can be seen on the edges of the lesion and there is irregular mucosa suggesting a malignant lesion in the large cut here we have another example we can see this is a stricture shouldering irregular mucosa a typical apple core appearance here we can see barium anema contrast outlines large intestine this is transverse colon and here is apple core appearance in or near hepatic flexure here we can see coronal reformatting of ct of the abdomen we can see oral contrast noted in the large cut in ascending colon near hepatic flexure infiltrating growth is noted all around the wall and this is malignant stricture with irregular shouldering and mucosa which is abnormal as well so this is an example of tumor in the ascending colon another example this is axial ct and this one is the coronal ct we can see infiltrating growth around ascending colon this is axial ct we can see abnormal mass around the ascending colon right kidney the left kidney a couple of simple cysts are noted in both kidney this is liver spleen ivc and aorta bifurcation of the aorta here we have another example coronal reformatting of uh, ct of the abdomen left lobe in the right lobe of the liver contrast in the stomach and small intestine we can see there is circumferential growth involving small intestine another example we can see ct examination where abnormal growth is noted small intestine with proximal hold up of the contrast and this proximal segment of the small intestine is dilated as well here we can see this is uh, duodenum and large solid mass is appreciated involving duodenal jejunal junction here we can see stomach hold up of the contrast is also noted while proximal duodenum is dilated as well ct examination we can see a dilated small bowel and growth is noted in it and this is a metastatic focus from the lesion in the small intestine this is schematic diagram we can see large intestine and this is clonoscope by doing clonoscopy we can not only diagnose the lesion but we can take biopsy from the lesion for proper histological diagnosis so these are uh, multiple modalities for the assessment of intestinal obstruction number one we have seen intestinal obstruction through plain x-ray and dilated gut loops air fluid levels and dilated gut loops then we have used ct examination ct examination we have seen strictures because of tuberculosis this is barium follow-through examination stricture so this is contrast study and this is ct examination so we have used three modality number one plain x-ray number two ct scan number three barium studies here we have examples of the barium studies for the assessment of intestinal obstruction due to multiple causes and then ct examinations ct examination for intestinal obstruction barium studies for intestinal masses so not only x-ray but barium studies cannot be can be used for the assessment of intestinal obstruction and uh, partial intestinal obstruction should be assessed with the help of barium studies and in complete intestinal obstruction it is contraindicated 
examples that the CT scanned for their assessment. So plain x-ray number one, number two in partial obstruction we can use barium studies. Number three, CT is the best modality because we can assess the exact extent of the disease like we can see metastatic focus, involvement of adjacent bistras, so we can properly stage the lesions with the help of CT and we can also use endoscopy or esophagoscopy, gastroscopy or clonoscopy for the assessment of the lesion and to have biopsy of the lesion. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.